Hi there, Synchro Lovers! Welcome back to my Synchro Secret channel, the go-to place of all things artistic swimming. My name is Agata Jehowska, and today I am going to dive deep into ways that artistic swimmers can train even if their pool space is limited. Whether you are practicing on one lane only, or training at a smaller facility, or looking at creative ways to add some excitement into your training, don't worry, I've got you covered. Stay along to learn some creative ways to make the most out of the space that you have. But before we start, I wanted to remind you to hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of my videos and that other people can also discover my channel. I know that many artistic swimming clubs are struggling to accommodate their swimmers in a pool. It is usually due to financial difficulties of paying for the facility or the unavailability of pools. Some pools have strict rules to give some pool hours that are open to the public only. That means that synchro clubs have to compete for space and time with swimming, water polo or diving clubs. Sometimes it is hard to accommodate all water sports out there. So if you are one of those clubs that only have half of the pool or one lane only or the pool is not so deep, don't worry, I am here to give you some ideas on how to train effectively and how you can accommodate all your swimmers in the facility that you have. We all know those warm-ups when the swimmers swim in laps one after the other. This is great when you have multiple lanes of space for all of them. But what do you do when your space is limited and you have a lot of swimmers to warm up? If you have a lane that is close to the wall, you can line up all of your swimmers and do some kicking exercises as your warm-up. Here is an example of me doing a warm-up in a small pool in Mexico. As you can see, along with the kicking, I also added some breathing exercises. So you can do 10 or 20 seconds of not breathing and then straight after continue with breathing. Don't be scared to be creative. Use some different types of kicks, for example, flatter kick, breaststroke kick, dolphin kick, or even egg beater. To make it even more organized, you can time your swimmer and let them perform those exercises at the same time. So if you put the timer on and you have 20 seconds on the timer, you let them know when the time starts with a little tap so they can hear it. They put their head in the water and they start their kicking. They continue to they hear another tap from you while they are continuing to kick for 10 seconds. They put their head in the water again when they hear another tap and so on, so on, so on. Another example of a warm-up is perfect when you have a shallow end of the pool where you can place your swimmers there so they can perform some jumps by pushing off the bottom of the pool with their feet. Start with straight jumps and then progress during your warm-up into some more difficult varieties. I usually add some half turns, jump with a clap, or even you can incorporate some partner drills. So for example, they can do the jumps synchronized and so on, so on. Creativity has no boundaries. You know, you can always do more and come up with more. Once you're done with your warm-up, let's move on to actual synchro skills. To optimize training sessions and tailor instruction to individual needs, consider dividing your artistic swimmers into two smaller groups. This strategic approach enables a more personalized and targeted training experience especially when your group is too big for the space you have. So you should place one group at the one side of the pool and the other group on the other side of the pool. And you should make them go at the same time. Obviously, they will be going from different directions. So the space that you have in one line or the facility is used to maximum capacity. And of course, this way will speed up the waiting time so the athletes do not have to wait so long for their turn. And you will be using, as I mentioned before, the maximum width of the lane. All right, so as an example, imagine that one group of the swimmers is on this side of the pool and the other one is on this side of the pool. This group of swimmer has to perform torpedo on their back, while this group of the swimmer has to perform egg beater sideways. Now they will go at the same time, obviously in different directions. When they arrive at the wall, then they reverse the exercise, so this group performs torpedo and this group performs egg beater. This way, the swimmers do not have to wait for their turn and they just can go and go and go. Obviously, make sure that you change the exercises so it doesn't get boring, but here is an idea how to make your one lane space more efficient. Of course, as always, you can get creative with your exercises and your setup. 
you can have one group performing strengthening exercises like for example push-ups, sit-ups or whatever you want outside of the water while the other group is performing their exercises on one lane or on the space that you have in the pool and then after some time for example five minutes of a kind of a circuit obviously you can give each group multiple exercises that they have to perform within that time once this time is up you switch the groups and you do the same thing by the way i would be very interested to know if you have any other ideas for exercises in a limited pool space let me know in the comment section under this video also if you have any questions regarding this topic make sure that you comment i will read it and either i will reply there or i am going to make another video so i can get deeper into the topic incorporating pair drills into your training will elevate the collaborative spirit within your artistic swimming team once you have assigned your pairs you can train figures or technical elements or in general technique with taps you can also use music for your routines or do them without the music the idea is that one of the swimmer is performing the exercises no matter what they are and the other one is watching and is giving feedback to them so i found this setup particularly helpful when i have a lot of swimmers training at the same time or i have one lane only as my space in the pool and the idea is that the swimmer that is watching they are not like just you know chilling there on the side or touching the wall they should be actually doing an egg beater and they should be watching under the water, they should be watching out of the water, they should be engaged in this process so they can give the best feedback they can. Another way of using the pair setup is to train synchronization. So this time the athletes have to perform certain elements or a routine hybrids at the same time. You can use taps, music or the swimmers can count by themselves. You can also add some equipment like elastic bands or weights to increase the sharpness or work on their height. Sometimes our training facilities are far from ideal and we should get creative and we should use what we have at hand. For example, if I do not have water canisters but I really want to use them, I'm looking around to find if maybe I have some pool boys or noodles or anything that floats and can be used in the water then I'm just grabbing it and using it. Make the best out of what you have and I guarantee that you can get pretty creative with what you have. And actually my the best drills came out of lack of equipment because I had to get super creative and it turned out to work the best. If your pool is very shallow, firstly make sure that you use your walls. It can be used for technique refinement or for strength training. And don't forget about your floating equipment. It can keep your swimmers out of the water, so far away from the bottom of the pool and you can use it efficiently and you can come up with some drills that are actually valuable for technique refinement or for, as I mentioned before, strength training, technical elements or figures. So there is always some ways to tackle that. Plus, make sure that you train skills that do not require deep water like back layout, front layout, ballet legs, some figures that do not have barracuda or also some lifts that are actually platforms. I do not recommend doing acrobatic movements in shallow water, so please avoid it, but for sure you can practice other skills. Of course, it should be noted that some skills require deeper water. So for example, skills like acrobatic movements, thrusts or even spins require some level of depth. So I would not advise you to do those skills in a shallow water. I would advise you to book at least one session per week for the athletes so they can try those skills in the deeper water. And of course, you can come up with the ideas. For example, do the spins on their back when laying on the back in the torpedo in a line setup or when you have a very shallow pool. So make sure you get creative on how to kind of change the perspective do not try to perform those skills in the shallow pool because it can be dangerous. And lastly, some pools are very short. They actually are not 25 meters. For example, I trained at pools that were 16 meters. And this is not enough to train stamina for artistic swimmers. In this instance, make sure that you double the laps. So for example, if you want the swimmers to swim 25 meters dolphin, 
make sure they swim two laps dolphin or even three laps. Also, add some exercises that require breath control. So no breathing, underwater swimming. So then the swimmers can get this conditioning from not breathing as much and they can get training for artistic swimming because artistic swimmers have to learn how to be under the water for longer periods of time. And of course, what I found out that is very efficient for condition training is butterfly, so dolphin. The swimmers hate it and they get very tired when performing this stroke, but it is super efficient for strength training or conditioning and I use it a lot. So here you have it, synchro lovers, some creative ideas for training in a limited pool space for your athletes. And don't forget that limitations and challenges can definitely spark creativity. If you found this video helpful and you like some of the tips that I shared, make sure that you give thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video. Bye!